In this period of activism against abuse of women and children, the Commission for the Rights of Cultural and Linguistic Communities has released a report into deaths and injuries at initiation schools. The report has found that there were deaths, beatings, assaults, and health risks at some initiation schools, and this has led to the suspension of initiation schools in Houting until December 2018. Studies were also conducted in the Eastern Cape, Western Cape, and Limpopo, where it was found that, that there were low fatalities because of proper consultation. The chairperson of the CRL Commission, Togo Mkwanazi Taluva, joins us to discuss this and other practices that lead to the abuse of children. Mkwanazi Taluva, good evening to you and welcome. Good evening to you, too. Now, unfortunately, this issue is something that you've been seized with from time to time and still not much improvement and in Houting the situation is worse. But typically, what are the problems at initiation schools? The problems at initiation schools generally is that uh, where there are deaths and uh, amputations and uh, all sorts of other negative things is that the people who are conducting the initiation schools are reckless at times. We found a lot of uh, assaults. Uh, some of the kids were assaulted to the point of losing their limbs. And we found that uh, the people who run schools do not really, some of them, where there are problems, do not really know what they are doing, basically. And, and this was more rife in Gauteng, I would like to believe. But what was the situation elsewhere? You, you see, in Gauteng, actually, the situation is much more complicated. In places like the Eastern Cape, we found that some of the problems are historical. In areas where there are serious problems, the cultural practice had been stopped and now is re-emerging. And there aren't enough experts on the ground, like Eman Bondwe, when you go to Lusigi Sigi, etc. You find that uh, the fathers of the boys who must go to initiation schools were not initiated themselves. So you find that people who are running initiation schools are much younger because uh, the, it's the re-emergence of the cultural practice. So they need support in terms of how do you do this correctly, but their aim is to do the right thing. They need the other experienced people to assist them to do the thing correctly. They need tighter monitoring. They need to make sure that uh, they are assisted basically. Which well, is a different problem <coughs> than in Gauteng. But, you know, and I, I think it's correct that we discuss this at this time yes. during the 16 days of activism against abuse of uh, women and children. Initiates are regarded as children, isn't it? Yes. When they go to initiation schools. Yes. Do they enjoy the same rights as other children in the country and the same protections? Should they enjoy They those should. Rights? They yeah. definitely should. Hence, we're saying in Gauteng, your cultural rights cannot supersede your right to culture, to, to life, your right to security. Those are constitutional imperatives. So although you've got your cultural rights, we need to weigh them up. Hence, we could say our tight proposal is that we shut down all initiation schools in Gauteng because they've been taken over by gangsters. Some of them, not all, but where the gangsters are rife, They've literally taken over the abducting children yeah. on their way to school, abducting children while they're playing in the streets and taking them to initiation school, even if your family doesn't practice uh, initiation. Well, that, but that's, cr that's crime. That's criminality. It's got nothing to do with culture then in that instance. That's why we're saying, <coughs> although the Eastern Cape people say, but people are dying there, uh, why do you allow it to continue? We are saying they're trying to do the right thing. Here, it's another situation where criminals have just taken over. But, but shouldn't, shouldn't certain um, standards be set and codes of conduct and all kinds of things be put in place to control whatever happens around initiation, whether it be in the Eastern Cape or it be in Houting? Because in Houting, blatantly, it's criminal, what we're talking about, and people must be arrested anyway for committing the crimes of abduction and beatings and all the stuff that we've spoken about. But even in the context of culture, I suppose certain standards have got to be set. We're very much happy that Gauteng has listened to us. They are uh, working on a policy and initiation policy for Gauteng. That's why we're saying 
we're giving them space, let's suspend, let the policy be enacted, let there be sites identified where initiation will take place so that get, there can be tight monitoring, the police can come and search uh, for weapons, for drugs, etc. Uh, instead of people just setting up a school anywhere, anytime. We need to have uh, dedicated spaces and tight monitoring. And people who are supposed to conduct these initiation schools must be trained. There must be minimum standards set. They must be monitored. There must be early intervention if something goes wrong. There must be medical assistance if something is going wrong. If things are going well, then you don't need anything to happen. But where there's a, a problem, there must be early intervention. And the police should be uh, available for quick response. Now, the view of the traditional leadership and healers in other parts of the country, Limpopo, Eastern Cape, Pumalanga, Western Cape, what do they think? I've just uh, suggested that maybe your commission should look at uh, setting standards and codes of conduct and so on on how these initiation schools should be run. They are very much in agreement generally. Because they, I even in a cultural setting, there were standards. It, it wasn't like you go there to do whatever you like, however you like. Mm. So they're the ones who must help us set those standards as a nation, agree that these are the minimum standards. And we're saying the, the, the health, welfare, and uh, right to life of those initiates is non-negotiable. Let's move to another topic, and uh, obviously, you know, the banning came about as, as all the, the, the injuries that young people yes. sustained at these, at these initiation schools. But there's another part of the same, of the cultural practices that affects young women here in South Africa, Uktuala. Something we've spoken about before, we've spoken repeatedly about. Is that still happening, and where is it happening? The Eastern Cape is a bit resistant. Some parts of KZN are resistant. But we're saying when you abduct, abduct a, a child, even an old woman like myself, it's a crime. And you must be dealt with the way people deal with crime. Don't find a, a name for it that will make it, you know, a cultural thing. It's got nothing to do with culture. Mm. You must just be locked up and uh, the police must do what the police have to do. But does this happen with the approval of the parents, of the individuals who get abducted? Um, uh, you know, again, this is the view mm. from Johannesburg, yes, so, to, so yes. it may be a bit difficult to understand how it happens. So, you know, the extent and the nature. Tell you, me about you it. You see, when two young people are a couple and they want to get married, and the parents maybe want more money and whatever, they used to stage this to, you know, go around the problems. Yes. But these are people who want to get married. And that's where it starts and that's where it stops in terms of the cultural practice. Now, when you abduct someone and then you say, I'm going to pay for this one, we are in human trafficking at mm -hmm. that point. Mm -hmm. And whoever takes money from you, we are buying and selling. There's no lobola. Uh, where the other party is not willing. So, so you could call it a human trafficking, as you it's say. serious human trafficking. Including rape on top of that. You see, you've, uh, you're involved in abduction, kidnapping, rape, trafficking. You should go to jail. And the people who assist you, the ones who take the money from you, the ones who are selling, must go to jail with you. And what are the authorities saying or doing about this? Well, the situation is much tighter now. The courts are in agreement with us. We're friends of the court in another uh, high court matter where we said culture starts here and ends there. This case is not about culture. The man is, is, is uh, got 21 years. He's in jail now. Right. But everything that is wrong in our society, we tend to blame it on culture in certain communities, isn't it? I mean, I suppose even your remarks, comments recently that corporal punishment must be done away with. There are communities or families at least that insist that they have not only to discipline their children, but beat them up as part of disciplining children. 
We are saying there are two types of families. There are those people who abuse their children, beat them up, and you, you know, this uh, assault, GPH. Mm. And they need to be arrested very fast. And I think what this judgment did from the Houghton High Court was then it complicated issues that you are not allowed to smack your child mm. anymore and you'll all be arrested together. What we're saying is that it creates a vacuum for parents. What comes first? Capacitating them in how to deal with problems around their children. Talking about the other parents who are trying to do good by their kids, not the abusers. Mm. And how are they supposed to deal with their kids? I mean, it's holidays now. Children are doing all sorts of things in your home. You're telling them, don't touch that, they're touching it. What then are you supposed to do? Mm. We're saying, let's not create a crisis for parents. Let us assist parents to guide their kids to be better people. But they need capacity building. You're not going to start by saying, don't touch them. Or we'll think about what, the, what are the alternatives. So you've got parents whose hands are tight. You've got children who are wondering what has happened now. They are testing the boundaries every day. Before long, they'll be out in the streets and smoking, yaupe, and doing all sorts of things. So you need to find a balance. Not to say to parents, don't dare, we'll take you to jail. Mm. And then create uh, parents who are unsure of themselves. Well, but you know, as we conclude, I, I'm, I will make this suggestion that as you talk about capacity, there are parents who've got the capacity to be parents. And there are parents who don't have the capacity yes. to be parents. Now, who's going to take responsibility to build that capacity in the individuals to become themselves disciplined and proper parents? Another challenge for us as a society. Social development said they're taking on the challenge. OK. Well, there you are. Very interesting things going on in our society, especially in these days of the 16 days of activism against abuse of women and children. And culture is always raised as an excuse when children are abused and abducted, taken to initiation schools, or when children are abducted and turned into wives. That is human trafficking, as we heard from Metoko uh, Mkanazi Kaluva. And of course, be careful with your hand as you try to instill discipline in your children. You have to draw a line somewhere. Don't abuse children and claim that it is your culture to instill discipline through extreme forms of violence against them. That's all that we had for you tonight here on uh, Soweto TV. And from us, good night to you.